Welcome back. So this is the first video of chapter nine in intermediate macroeconomics. And in chapter nine, we're going to introduce a uh, medium run model uh, of our ISLM model. And so basically what we're going to do is we're going to take the Phillips curve that we developed in chapter eight and add it to our ISLM model. And so the idea here is now we're allowing for changes in inflation uh, in order to have a, a better picture of what's going to happen to unemployment output and inflation in the medium run, right? The biggest difference, as we said, between the medium run and the short run, which we covered in chapters three through six, uh, is that uh, prices are allowed to change. And so we expect uh, changes in inflation. So this is going to be, um, a fair amount of sort of sort of simple algebra in the first few slides here. Um, the algebra itself is not very important because um, what's really important is the sort of takeaway, uh, which is you know that changes in output and changes in unemployment are related, right? Through Oaken's law that we talked about, and we'll talk about that a little bit more, um, and that is going to affect changes in inflation uh, in the medium run, right? Through the Phillips curve. Uh, so we're going to go through that. Uh, we're going to keep our very simple um, production function, which we had uh, in chapter um, seven and eight, uh, where output is just equal to the number of workers you have, right? And, and that's, that's an okay assumption right now when we're only worried about the unemployment rate, because we know through Oaken's law, the output is very much related to how many workers are working. Um, it won't be a reasonable assumption when we start talking about long run economic growth and there and in those chapters, we're going to have to add back in uh, capital and technology, which are going to be the two main drivers uh, of growth. OK, so in chapter six, we had our sort of augmented IS uh, model, right, where we said, OK, we've got output is equal to consumption, which is a function of disposable income investment which is a function of output and the real borrowing rate which is r plus x where r is the uh, policy rate the real policy rate plus government spending g and then in chapter eight uh, we added you know the phillips curve right so we said the difference between actual inflation pi uh, and expected inflation pi e uh, is equal to minus alpha which is just a uh, you know coefficient on on the curve times the unemployment rate minus the natural rate of unemployment rates, uh, natural rate of unemployment. So we can think of that as, you know, the difference between the unemployment rate and the natural rate. We said if the unemployment rate is higher than the natural rate, then there's going to be downward pressure on prices. And so inflation should be lower than expected inflation. Uh, and if the unemployment rate is below the natural rate, um, then inflation should be higher than expected inflation. There will be upward pressure on prices. So when the unemployment rate is equal to the natural rate, then this uh, parentheses becomes zero, right? And so we can think about, all right, well, what is the sort of natural employment level? Well, it's going to be equal to the labor force times one minus the unemployment uh, rate. And so potential output then, because we assume the output is just equal to uh, employment, it, which we're going to call YN, you know, the subscript N, is equal to L times one minus UN. And so what we're going to be interested in is not only the sort of gap between unemployment and the natural rate of unemployment, but also the output gap. And so the output gap is the difference between how much we're producing now and whatever that natural rate of output is. And the natural rate of output is that rate where there's no pressure on inflation. So if we're producing above that rate, uh, then there will be upward pressure on inflation. And if we're producing below that rate, uh, then there will be downward pressure on inflation. So it's the opposite of the unemployment rate, obviously, because when we have more workers working, the unemployment rate is low and output is high. And we had, when we have fewer workers working, the unemployment rate is high and output is low. And so the output gap we can think of as this minus L times uh, the difference between the actual unemployment rate and the natural rate of unemployment. So the key here is just that that sort of output gap and the unemployment gap are very similar. They just move in opposite directions. All right, so let's think about how we would graph this. So 
First, we have our short run equilibrium. And so in the short run, output can be anything, right? We might be in a recession. We might be in a boom. Um, so output could be above or below what we're going to call the natural rate of output. And we graph that with our short run model, right? Our ISLM model. So we have a downward sloping IS curve. We have our horizontal LM curve, which is uh, the policy rate set by the Federal Reserve. Um, and so what we have here is we have an output level Y that is actually above our um, natural rate. And how do we know that? Well, we have our medium run graph here represented by the Phillips curve. Now, this Phillips curve is um, flipped uh, that compared to the Phillips curve that we had uh, in Chapter 8 because we put output on the horizontal axis instead of the unemployment rate. And we know when output is higher, the unemployment rate is lower. And when output is lower, the unemployment rate is higher. So instead of a downward sloping Phillips curve, we have an upward sloping Phillips curve. Why did we do this? Just to confuse you. No, not really. Uh, the reason why we did this is because our ISLM model has output on the horizontal axis, and we want to be able to graph them together. So now what do we have on our vertical axis here? Well, now we have the change in inflation rate, right? We said this is the uh, sort of adaptive expectations Phillips curve that we think fits the data best, uh, at least since the 1970s. Um, and so when this year's inflation is equal to last year's inflation, then that's zero. And then that is our natural level of output, right? There's no pressure on inflation um, and output is equal to the, the natural rate of output. The unemployment rate is equal to the natural rate of unemployment. But in this situation at point A, output is actually higher, right? We're to the right of our natural rate of output and therefore inflation is going to be increasing. So we're going to have higher inflation this year than we had last year because we're producing more than our natural rate of output. All right. So let's think about that, right? We can replace, if we want to replace um, the equation that we had in 9.2, which relied on the unemployment rate with output instead, then we can say, okay, the change in uh, inflation, um, whether we're using expected inflation up here as in equation 9.3 or last year's inflation, so this minus one in the parentheses, which is a little confusing. They don't really introduce it really well because we used to have pi t and pi t minus one. That's the same thing. This is just last year's inflation. It doesn't mean we're multiplying it by minus one. Um, so now the change in inflation is equal to alpha over the labor force times y minus yn. And so basically what this says, note that we had a negative sign in front of the alpha before when we were using the unemployment rate, but now we don't because we're using output. So this says when the output gap is positive, inflation is going up. When the output gap is negative, inflation is going down. That's the key takeaway here. So when we're producing more um, than you know, the natural level of output, that's going to increase pressure on wages, increase pressure on prices, inflation is going to go up. When we're producing less than the natural level of output, uh, that's going to decrease pressure on wages, decrease pressure on prices, inflation is going to go down. So just a reminder of, you know, Oaken's law, this is sort of the key in that relationship, that switch between the unemployment rate and output um, is that, all right, well, we've got this output growth, right? Not output level, really, but output growth. And then the change in the unemployment rate. So output growth on the horizontal axis, change in the unemployment rate on the vertical axis. Uh, and then we've got this fitted line. And as we can see, it fits pretty well, but, you know, with macroeconomics, nothing ever fits perfectly. Um, but basically, when we have high growth rates, the unemployment rate is falling. And when we have low or negative growth rates, the unemployment rate is going up. Okay. And this is uh, 1960 to 2014. And we do seem to see the, see the relationship better in annual data than we do in quarterly data. There's a little bit more noise in the quarterly data. So we can take this equation and we can figure out the, uh, we can take this line and figure out the equation that best fits it, right? And so that's what we do here. We can think of Oaken's law as the change in the unemployment rate is approximately equal to the negative uh, of the growth rate of output. 
and the equation that best fits it is a slope of minus 0.4 um, and then this minus 3%, meaning that a growth rate of 3% is kind of what's needed to keep the unemployment rate uh, constant. That's this horizontal intercept right here, right? So we need a growth rate of about 3% in order to keep uh, the unemployment rate the same. That's that zero line here. Um, okay, and then output growth you know, above that normal. So if it's 1% above the normal, that leads to a 0.4% reduction in the unemployment rate. So if it's 4%, then the unemployment rate falls uh, by 0.4%. If it's 5%, then it would fall by 0.8%. And then vice versa, right? If it's 2%, then the unemployment rate uh, is going to go up by 0.4% because then the term in parentheses is negative times a negative. That's positive. The unemployment rate goes up. And so this 0.4 is called the Oaken coefficient, meaning the relationship between GDP growth and changes in the unemployment rate.